It All Came True from 1940 was directed by Lewis Seiler and starred Humphrey Bogart and Anne Sheridan. It's basically just a fun, crazy mix of crime noir, a little bit of drama, some romantic comedy, and even musical theater. I mean, it's really all over the place, but it's still a lot of fun. The film opens up with the character Mrs. Taylor, played by Jessie Busley, who arrives at a boarding home that she lives at. She joins some others for dinner, including Renee Salmon, actor Grant Mitchell, who I caught recently in the film Meet the Stewarts with William Holden. There's also Miss Flint, played by Zasu Pitts, and Miss Ryan, who was Una O'Connor, and she has been in a number of old Universal monster films I've watched. A great actress. So anyhow, all of them are together at this boarding house, and we learn of the conflict of the film, that apparently there is a financial struggle to keep the house and it's about to be foreclosed. Oh no. So the residents are having a quiet card game that evening when Sarah Jane, played by actress Ann Sheridan, arrives, and she's noisy and rambunctious, shoving away some creepy guy before stepping inside and chatting with the folks there. And she's a pretty wild character, but. They all seem to approve, except for her ma, Maggie Ryan, who laments, me own girl has grown up to be a hussy. And you know, of course she says, no, I am not, I'm a good girl. Well, she leaves and we cut to the Cairo Club, where we find Bogart's character, Chips McGuire, or Griselli, as is also known in the film. And he's at the Cairo Club. What is it with Bogart and North Africa? Well, anyhow, he's chatting with the piano player, Tommy Taylor, who's played by Jeffrey Lynn. I caught him not too long ago in the movie The Roaring Twenties with Bogart and James Cagney. He's a good actor. And basically what happens is the cops have arrived outside at this club and they're yelling, oh no, we're staked. And apparently old Bogart is a little mixed up in crime here. No surprise, you know. Well, he's rapidly destroying his records with fire as the cops are bringing an ax to his door. So yeah, there's some serious stuff going on. What they do manage to sneak away. Well, Griselli is soon on the run with Tommy. And remembering that Tommy's mom runs a boarding house, he schemes about just hiding out there for a while, just high, laying low from the law. Tommy isn't crazy about the idea, but he doesn't really have a choice here. So Griselli's calling the shots. So they show up, and Tommy's mom, Mrs. Taylor, is thrilled to see Tommy again, and after a brief reunion, they're able to get some rooms. Griselli's room is loaded with plenty of taxidermied animals that seem to spook him, but, you know, he settles in. Well, the next day, Sarah Jane wakes up late and has breakfast with her ma, and Mrs. Taylor really wants her to go and speak to Tommy again. So apparently they used to have a romantic thing together, but she seems kind of disinterested in the idea that he never wrote to her or stayed in contact. But she does go and talk to him as he plays the piano, but it's a short chat before they're yelling at one another. Not a great start here. Well, Mrs. Taylor is working in Mr. Griselli's room and notices he's got a bunch of guns in a suitcase, but he quickly covers over it and just says, oh, I'm just a big fan of hunting. And for now, she goes along with it. Now later, Sarah Jane notices Tommy talking with this shady looking criminal character outside. She starts to get suspicious and asks questions. Suspicious of why this Griselli guy spends so much time in his room. So Tommy has to make these excuses for now. But she takes a liking to his piano playing and wants to sing with him. And sure enough, they're singing together, Angel in Disguise. And you know, Anne Sheridan really does have a lovely singing voice in this film. And it's a great song, by the way. I would clip it here, but YouTube loves to crack down on anything I do, even remotely copywritten. So just go look this one up, Angel in Disguise. You can find it. Sarah Jane finally figures out who this mysterious Griselli character is. And she actually knows of him from the past. And he just seems happy to see her and asks that she come and talk with him. I'm going daffy, he says, all alone in his room. So for now, he's still kind of safe. Sarah Jane goes and talks to Tommy, because she's figured out what's going on with him and Griselli hiding out, and decides to make the most of it, and says, hey, Griselli, you're gonna come on down for dinner and join everybody. And sure enough, he does show up, they have dinner, and those black and white lemon meringue pies look so good. Well, they follow dinner, with a sort of talent show for Griselli. Starts off with Renee Salmon doing his cheeseball poetry reading, 
much to Griselli's annoyance, and this is followed by Felix Bresert as the great Baldini, dressed up as like a Roman soldier, I think, and he's doing these magic tricks with his trained dog. Then, of course, he messes up a lot, to his great dismay, and it's goofy, and everybody loves it and laughs. And the dog ends up spoiling his big grand trick, hiding a fishbowl, and it's, it's just goofy. They end the show with Sarah Jane and Tommy doing their musical number. And again, Ann Sheridan's singing is really great in this film. Well, they get a notice from the bank that it's about to foreclose. Sarah Jane sees this, figures out what's going on with this boarding home and how it's in trouble. She talks to Griselli about it, and he shares a crazy idea he has of turning the house into some sort of exclusive club with entertainment and home-cooked meals. Now, Tommy hears about this. He's not so sure about the idea. But here's the situation. Since Griselli, earlier in the film, used Tommy's gun for this crime, he's sort of at his mercy, you know, to the whim of this overconfident Griselli. Basically has control over him. Because if he doesn't go along with it, he'll just report him to the police. Meanwhile, Mrs. Flint sees Griselli's picture in a crime magazine, and figures out who he is. But Sarah Jane, who kind of notices this as well, kind of keeps her quiet about it by telling her creepy stories about the things that happen. And, you know, and she's spooked enough to keep quiet about it for now. Well, the big evening arrives for the grand opening of the Roaring 90s Club, which is what this house has been converted into. There's a huge crowd that shows up and everyone there is singing the daughter of Rosie O'Grady, which instantly brings me back to... Bugs Bunny singing that, you know. She's the daughter of Rosie O'Grady. Yeah, all right, anyhow, the great Boldini does his silly magic act. And you know, never mind the fact that the house now looks magically massive on the inside, but hey, whatever, it's all fun. Now, meanwhile, Miss Flint, who has had a little too much champagne, heads to the police to report that her life is in danger. And she lets slip the name Chips McGuire to the great interest of all of the police and the detectives. So back to the show. It's a musical review still going on with some old grannies singing and dancing, followed by a musical number, Beautiful Doll. I mean, it's quite a variety show with the old roaring 90s. Well, the police detectives show up, but will they find Griselli and bring him down? Will Tommy be framed? Will Sarah Jane become a popular singer? And will there be romance between her and Tommy? Well, you gotta watch the end of this crazy film to find out. So some quick closing thoughts. This film was a hoot, even if it is all over the place. It feels like it went from gangster crime noir to comedy to drama to musical review. Ah, it's all good. And there's a similarity in this film to Billy Rose's Diamond Horseshoe with Betty Grable. That's one I need to review on this channel in the future. It's interesting that the musical director for this film, Leo F. Forbstein, was also musical director for Looney Tune cartoons and would apparently use some of the same music for movie and cartoon work. And boy, I could just really hear it in this film. I grew up on a diet of Looney Tune cartoons. And as I'm watching this film and listening to it, I couldn't help but just pick up some of that musical familiarity. And not just Bugs Bunny singing, but a lot of the music just, it sounds like Looney Tunes. And I love that about this film. Well, a few things about the actors. You can't go wrong with Humphrey Bogart. And I've yet to be disappointed by anything he's been in. Even sillier films like Dr. X. And although his character in this film, I'll be honest, he does seem a tad inconsistent. That at one point he's a murderous gangster. And at others he's this big softy. He's still great. And, you know, I love just his idea of him as a gangster hiding out in this club for a while. And, of course, Ann Sheridan is fantastic as this bright, strong-willed character who really shined in this film both as an actress and also for her singing, which is just great in this film. All of the character actors here were a lot of fun as well. And as I've mentioned over and over, it's the music in this film that is really amazing. Well, that's the movie It All Came True from 1940. It's an excellent film and it's worth checking out. He's the daughter of Rosie O'Grady, a regular old-fashioned goyle.